Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. We're going to start breakfast by making our French toast mix. Here I have three eggs, some cinnamon, some vanilla extract, and I'm adding some milk while I'm whisking. And I'm just going to put that to the side. Here I have some bread and I'm just cutting the crust off. And I have a video on what to do with your leftover bread crust so that you don't throw them away. And now I'm just flattening it with a rolling pin and I'm adding a fully cooked sausage. I'm just rolling it up and kind of pinching it at the end to seal it so here I have 10 fully cooked sausages and I'm just going to go ahead and roll them up and now I'm just going to dip each French toast roll ups into the mixture and you want to make sure that you coat all sides and now add three tablespoons of butter into a pan and you're going to cook all of your French toast roll ups for about three minutes on each side. Also, please don't neglect the size. Those also need to be seared. So about another minute, even if you have to hold it. And now you're just going to remove everything from the pan. And here comes the best part. You're going to sprinkle them with some powdered sugar, just like that. And now I'm just going to plate everything. I decided to be a little fancy and put them in these bowls with the plates. And I'm going to have the link in the description box if you guys are interested in these plates. I got them from Amazon. And now I'm just adding some strawberries, a little bit of maple syrup. I don't really use a lot since it's already powdered sugar there. Some yogurt and a little bit of granola. And that is it for their breakfast. In their smoothies today, here we have one cup of almond milk and about a half a cup of frozen cauliflower, one frozen banana, a half a cup of frozen pineapple, and about a half a cup of frozen cherries. And we're just going to blend this until smooth. And here's their smoothies for today. For lunch, I'm going to start by making our Asian slaw. For the dressing, you'll need some sesame oil, rice wine vinegar, honey or agave, soy sauce, some garlic, some ginger and salt. I'm going to post the recipe in the description box below. Now you're just going to give this a whisk and set it to the side. Here I have a bag of coleslaw mix, some cilantro, green onion, sesame seeds, and I'm just going to pour the dressing over it, give it a quick toss. And the longer this is in the fridge, the better. I only have 15 minutes, but it was still pretty good. So about today's lunch, so I saw this on Pinterest. I believe it was called Applebee's Copycat Wonton Tacos or something like that, and it sounds so delicious. First, you wanna make sure that your wonton wraps are fully coated with some tub of oil. Here I'm just using avocado oil and you wanna make sure that it is coated on both sides. Then you want to bake these um, in your oven rack so they can have that taco shape. However, my um, oven racks <laughs> was a little dirty. So I decided to use a baking sheet and bake it this way. And let me tell you, this was so delicious. And while that was cooking, I went ahead and cooked the uh, meat mixture. I'm also going to tag the link for the recipe in the description box. Here I'm just taking out some of that fat or grease and now I'm adding some onion and I also use ground beef by the way. Okay, so there's ginger, garlic, and you got hoisin sauce, you got rice vinegar, you have soy sauce. It is super delicious and honestly, you can just eat this with some rice and call it a go. It is pretty good on its own. So everything seems to be going well and the meat was delicious, the slaw was delicious and now all we have to do is put it together and this is what happens, right? As you can see, it doesn't really make a big enough um, pocket to add the meat and the coleslaw here or the Asian slaw and as you can see, I'm having a hard time <laughs> putting it in in there with a spoon and if you open it a little too hard it'll just break in half so i'm gonna have to rework this somehow to make sure that the opening or the pockets is a little wider but you know as i got a little impatient and just shove it in with my my hands so if you guys try this recipe let me know what works for you let me know how you keep them open um but this is what i got but it was still delicious though so 
here was our lunch wonton tacos with asian coleslaw again i'm going to rework this and i'm going to let you guys know what i came up with for dinner, I made pho ga, which is a Vietnamese chicken noodle soup. Some of you may be familiar with pho with beef. This is the same version of that, but it uses chicken instead of beef because my six-year-old don't love the beef. I believe it's just a texture with him. So, but the chicken is delicious. So you want to start by charring your onions and ginger, and you want it to have that burnt kind of color. <laughs> and then you're going to add some bone-in skin on chicken legs or thighs and add some broth. And for the spices, you can purchase this at an Asian grocery store. It comes in a pack so that you don't have to buy each of them individually. That's what they look like. Or if you don't have access to that, you can use cinnamon sticks, star anise. I'm going to post the link to the recipe in the description box so that you can have the full recipe. And now I'm just adding some fish sauce, some sugar, and you want to add your salt later. Some coriander, I'm sorry, cilantro. And then occasionally you want to make sure that you scoop off the scum or the dirty foam that rises to the surface and you are pretty much done. You just let this cook, um, let it simmer for about two hours and just occasionally you want to just remove that dirty foam that rises to the surface. And then in the meantime, go ahead and cook your rice noodles. This is the one that I'm using. I know that they have a particular one that they use for pho, but this is the one that I have on hand. Just read the directions and follow the direction. And then once you are done, you want to make sure that you rinse this with cold water to stop the cooking process. So you are pretty much done. That's how simple making pho is and I should do it more because it's so delicious. After about two hours or so, I'm removing the chicken pieces from the broth. They are like literally falling off the bone and once they are cool enough to handle, you can just shred it with a fork or however you want to do it. So next you just want to get another pot and strain the broth and you can pretty much discard all the other stuff, the onions and the cinnamon sticks and all that stuff and you are left with this beautiful, delicious, um, flavorful broth and here I'm just adding some salt you can adjust to your liking. To assemble, you're going to start by adding the noodles, then the broth, then the chicken, and now you can pretty much go to town. I have basil, bean sprouts, cilantro, mint, some lime wedges, and you have to add some hoisin sauce in there. And since this was for my kids, no sriracha for them, but yes, I added so much of that hot sauce in mine. It tastes so good. And that is it. It is super easy to make and the broth you know, you can just refrigerate that until you are ready to eat it again. For dessert, I am making Oreos mousse. So I read an article on how Walmart was selling tubs of Oreo mousse. I believe it was last year or the year before that. And so I thought I would give it a try because mousse is a pretty simple um, recipe to make. It usually only uses two to three ingredients. I found a couple of recipes online and the one I decided to use has condensed milk in it. So I thought it would be interesting instead of just using whipped cream and powdered sugar. So you can get your kids or your partner to crunch up the Oreos. Then you can start whipping the cream, adding the condensed milk gradually. This mixture won't get stiff like if you were just to use whipped cream and powdered sugar. Um, as you can see, it, it's still a little watery, but once you add the Oreos, mix it all up together and put it in the fridge for at least three to four hours. It is so delicious and has a really soft and creamy texture. It uses three ingredients and it's super easy to make. The hardest part is waiting for it to set. I left mine in the fridge for like four hours and you just wanna cover it with a cling wrap or something like that so it doesn't, you know, smell. <laughs> and then, and that's pretty much it. I just added a couple of Oreos on top and it is ready to go. And that's it guys. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I will see you next time. Bye.